Hey there, Moore here, and thank you for joining me on my channel today. Today, we're going to talk about a little bit of a concept, ask a couple questions about legendaries, and see if we can't flesh out the answer together. But first, before we get into it, I want to give a big thank you and shout out to my subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. It means the absolute world to me more than you can ever imagine. And if you are here watching this video and you are not yet a subscriber of my channel, then I hope by the end of the video, I can have the privilege to be able to call you a subscriber of this channel. So let's get into the idea. What is the question? Are legendary champions worth it for the free to play or low spend account? Let's go answer it. So today, I want to get into a little bit of a conversation with you to try to figure out and answer this question. Are legendary champions worth it to the free to play and the low spend account? Are they worth the time and the energy it takes to save up the shards, to pull the shards, to fuse the champions? Are they worth it? That's a crazy big question. Of course, on the surface, you're going to say, of course they're worth it, right? It's a legendary champion. Of course they're worth it. But really, are they? Are they actually worth the effort, the time, the energy, the resources that it takes to be able to pull them, to be able to get them? Let's come over here. Let's look at this. I have a portal right here. I have 112 ancient shards. I got one sacred shard. But what's my chance of actually getting legendary? My chance to pull a legendary is 0.5%. 0.5. That's a 1 in 200 chance to pull a legendary champions out of ancient shards. That's the ancient shards. I got it. Sacred shards are 6%. All right, cool. But that's still like a 1 in 18 chance to pull one legendary out of a sacred shard. That's still a ridiculously low amount of chance. The statistically, the chances of still pulling the legendary are crazy low when it comes down to it. That tells me I need 200 different ancient shards to potentially only get one legendary. And really, it doesn't actually, the math doesn't work out like that. That was if I had 200 shards that were all opening at the exact same time, that were all interconnected statistically, then I would get one legendary out of the course of the entire thing based on the odds over there. But I've got, but each ancient shard is its own chance. So I have a 1 in 200 chance for each individual ancient shard. So if I open 200 ancient shards in one setting, I'm not guaranteed to get a legendary. Granted, I'm not guaranteed to only get one, two. I could possibly pull three or four. I got it. It's a statistics. It's a chance. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. Every time I pull those ancient shards, every time I open a shard, it's a gamble. Me personally, I'm actually trying to build up to hit that 200 mark so I can do a video for you some entertainment value for you and see how many legendaries I can actually pull. So all those ancient shards I got in there video, I've actually already pulled them. It's a pretty nice video. You can check out the link. There'll be a card up in the corner of the video. Go check it out. It's a lot of fun. See you there. To see if I can actually incorporate those legendaries into my account and actually progress my account because part of the question is, are they actually worth it? Are those legendaries actually worth the effort to save up these shards? Are they actually worth the effort to pull them and force them and incorporate into my currently existing teams? Because I got some decent teams. I'm on Alter Nightmare Clan Boss. Granted, it takes me like four keys to get the first two chests or two chests. I got room for improvement there. I'm on Ice Golems. Come here. I'm on Ice Golem 20, right? Yep, Ice Golem 20. I'm on, oh, that's Minotaur. Minotaur maxed out as well. I'm maxed on all the uh, potion keeps as well. I'm on Dragon 20, Spider Den, I am on Stage 16, and Fire Knight, I am on Stage 19. I am pretty far into the game when it comes down to it. I am what would be borderline mid-game, end-game, right? Would it be really worth it for me to incorporate some new legendaries that I pull from those shards into my teams? Will they actually make my teams better overall? I'm not entirely too sure if the answer for that question is yes, for sure, definitely. Get that legendary. Put it in there. Some of them, yes. Some of them, no. Maybe, maybe so. I don't know. That's the question I want to try to answer to you with you today. If we'll talk this out, I mean, I want to talk these ideas out and see just if these legendaries are actually worth the effort. So <clears throat> one of the questions I want to try to figure out is once you get the legendary, how much or how hard is it to really max these guys out? 
part of the problem is you can wait you can invest and you can build them up you can get a level 60 you can six star them all day long easy enough just like any other champion because they're legendary that part does not make any difference okay cool got it so it's just as hard to upgrade a level um a legendary to level 60 as it is to upgrade a rare to level 60. so i'm going to come to those two compare those two stats together like that legendaries are worth it because they're going to usually usually going to have higher base stats better skills overall four to five skills instead of two to three skills i got it so legendary is going to be more beneficial for your account in that aspect because you can upgrade them and you can level them up however Something we need to take into consideration is when you come to the Ascension, I don't have any legendaries that aren't fully ascended, so I can't just do that. But we can look at, hey there, if you're liking the video so far, hit that subscribe button down below. Thanks. Shaman here. Shaman to upgrade takes the mid-level potions to upgrade her, right? The legendaries start with the top end. If I remember right, it's going to be one of the color potions and two of the big white potions the arcane potions if i'm wrong about that please correct me down on the bottom below please let me know but i know for sure every single star ascension for a legendary champion takes the big 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 potions to do it and so those take time to grind right those take time to grind but they are not impossible to get they're not crazy hard to get so it's not too bad it would be worth it for me to grind the potions for those. So let's go into it. Let's find something else out here. Let's get into... Let's check out this. Um, uh, legendary here, Valkyrie. Valkyrie is one of the most sought-after legendaries in the game. Why? Because she comes with a team counterattack. This one right here. Team, ca team counterattack and a crazy, insane shield. A shield that will is based off of her defense, which she has... A 1600 level defense, base defense to begin with. So she can easily get four or 5,000 defense. And her shield is based off that defense. And it's a team shield. And it's a team counterattack. A crazy amazing skill. Something you would expect on a legendary, right? Exactly. However, my question or problem is, it's at a four turn cooldown. You want her to be used in clan boss. This is where she going to be used most at, right? Her counterattack is most effectively used in the clan boss. To create a clan boss counterattack team, speed to your team, put her at speed 191, go into Ultra Nightmare clan boss, and have a team counterattack against that clan boss. That's why you would use her, just like you'd use Martyr or a Skull Crusher as well, right? Skull Crusher is epic, however, but Martyr and Valkyrie are both legendaries. You want to use that counterattack. Four turn cooldown. Not the right uh, cooldown, not the right turn rotation you need a three turn cooldown well you can book her get her down to a get a cooldown reduction on it and get her down to a three turn cooldown increase shield increase damage as you go down the way awesome cool even a bigger shield awesome great but the problem is the books legendary books are darn near impossible to get right darn near impossible to get so at the max this that skill out, you need seven books for her A2. And you need six books to max out the damage on her A1. And that's all she gets. That's six and seven. That's 13 books to max her out. Granted, your A1, you don't really don't need to max out. But in Clan Boss, you want as much damage as you possibly can get, right? But you want the seven and the A2. But it's luck of the draw. It's a gamble that if you're going to get all seven books directly into her A2. I've seen it to where you've done it all the way down. Five books, six books, you need one more. Next thing you know, A2 and 3 get all the books. And it's the very last book to max the person out before you finally get that cooldown reduction. It happens, but again, it's just a gamble. It's a gamble on where those books end up. And for her, she would need 13 books to be able to fill it, finish it off, finalize it out, and actually max her out. But 13 legendary books. How hard are legendary books to actually get? Let's go find out. I check something out here. This is my account, right? I have Warchief. Warchief is a legendary. There's three books in his A2. There's one, two, three, four, five books in his A2. Sorry, his three books in his A1, five in his A2. And I think I have a book or two over here. Come here. I need you out of the vault. Thank you. And one book, two book, one book, two book, five book. 10 book. I've got 10 legendary books that I have put into champions, right? 
come here. Let's check this out. Not progression rewards. Daily login rewards. My account is less than six months old. Barely, it is almost six months old. I've got 10 legendary books. I have pulled 10 legendary books. Yes, you get some legendary books from the challenges. Yes, you get them from some of the missions. You can pull them off and you can get them as you progress your account. Overall, I got it. But they're still crazy hard to get. Epic books, on the other hand, I've maxed out a couple different epic champions. I've got a lot more out of, probably got 15. I got set up, what was it? 15? 13. Legendary books. I probably got a good 30, maybe 40 epic books. Epic books are much easier to get a hold of. But those legendary books, they're a pain to get a hold of, right? Let's see what we got going on. We have a bunch of tournaments and we have a bunch of events going on right now. In this arena onslaught tournament, look, not even a single book, any kind of book is a reward. Spider tournament. There's an epic book up there in the corner. And there's no legendary books or epic books even in the top positions. Champion training. Another epic book, a rare book, but no legendary book. And, okay, there are two legendary books if you happen to win your tournament. For a free-to-play and a low-spend account, that is very, very hard to do. It is possible. For a Fire Knights tournament or an Ice Golem tournament, personally, my account can actually place the top three fairly easily. But that's my account. Champion training. As you can see, I got 2,100 versus 21,000. I am nowhere near able to actually compete up against it, so I'm not going for it. So those legendary books are out of my grasp. And for the typical and average free-to-play account and low-spend account, that top place is out of reach for us, unfortunately. So those legendary books aren't able for us to get. Dragon Tournament, it's not live right now, so I can't see what's going on with it. And we have an event going on. forgot what the event is. Drag Dungeon Divers. And in the Dungeon Diver event, we have a rare book. We have an epic book. And we do have a legendary book. So of what? The one, three, four different events going on right now? Realistically, there's only one legendary book for a free-to-play or low-spend account to get. And even then, it's a crazy high point value for the Dungeon Divers, which is going to be very hard for the free-to-play account to actually acquire that legendary book. Again, it's possible. We could go for it. Focus all your energy on it and get that legendary bark. It is worth it sometimes to do it. But is it? Is it really worth the effort and the investment of the energy to strive to get those legendary books? To be able to book those legendary champions? Because are those legendary champions, is it really worth it overall? Are those champions really going to be that much of a game changer for your account? Personally, it might be. Depending on the champion. My opinion on the matter, when it comes down to it, my opinion is the legendary champions in general are not worth your effort. They're not worth your effort to go down and chasing those rewards and chasing those events just to get that legendary book because not all those champions are actually worth it. For example, let's get into Rosin real quick. Rosin is a free-to-play fuse champion. But again, you can you use him on Clan Boss. You can use him in other parts, but Clan Boss, three-turn cooldown, right? His A2 is on a four-turn cooldown, which is where you're going to actually do the weekend slash defense down, which is what he's good for for the clan boss. But again, takes six books to book him down to a three-turn cooldown. His A1, A1, you want that three hit, which is whatever. You know, the books aren't going to help you with that. And then this bog down ability, which is 100% terminal reduction, which you don't use for clan boss, but is what you're going to use in other parts of the content, saying like arena or even dungeon or spiders or something like that. But again, it's a seven turn cooldown. Book it up. It's still only a six turn cooldown, but it takes books to get there. So it takes three books there. It takes six books. That's nine books. And it takes five more books for the A1 to max it out. So you're looking at 14 books to max out this champion. He's a good champion. He's an amazing champion. But my concern is the books required to max these champions out are unrealistic for the free-to-play or low-spin account. So in my opinion, in general, most legendaries are not worth your time and effort. They're not worth it for you. They're not worth it to spend your energy, to spend your resources, to spend your time on these champions. They're just not worth it to me, in my opinion. There are some that are worth it. There are some that definitely you can use that really don't need books. For example, let's get into the door. I have her, Queen Eva. As you saw before, I only have two books in her. They're, uh, they were wasted books. Unfortunately, I waste them here. She doesn't need them. 
<clears throat> she does not need her books because really the reason why you use her is for her A2 right here. Attacks all enemies, decrease the terminator by 20%, resets the cooldowns if she kills somebody. You use her for mob control and wave control. One hit shot, nuke the waves, and boom, resets it, and she does it every single turn. So her turret cooldown doesn't matter. Some legendary champions are built like that to where you don't need the buffs. Those ones are worth the effort to be able to get. I got it. But I don't feel the champions that need the books are worth the effort to actually focus hard on. Because those books are so hard to get. You can do just as much effort. You can do just as much damage and progress through the content just as much with a core solid team of good epic champions. That you could actually book out more realistically because you can get the epic books more frequently. Of the four events going on, three of the four had an epic book involved in the rewards. One of them had a legendary book. I got it. It's just easier to get the epic books because they're epic champion, right? And you can do just as much and you can progress your account just as far with a core team of epic champions rather than a core team of legendary champions. I hear you, and I understand, and I get it, that if you get into Arena, and you go check out the Platinum tiers, top players here, in the Platinum, it is full of Legendary, or almost all Legendary. I hear you, I got it, but remember, those people, the majority of them, are pay to win. They've paid out, and they use their credit card to play this game, and chances are all those champions are booked out. Six months in, I got 10 legendary, sorry, 13, was it 13 legendary books? 10 legendary books? I have forgotten now at this point. I don't even have enough to max one champion. I'm trying to max out my war chief because I feel he's important to my account. He can definitely help progress my account. That's why he's got my books. But they're so hard to get. We can't compete. Build a team, a solid core team for your content, for your account of epic champions. And those epic champions will carry you through the content. That's what I've done. My teams are based around Epic Champions, based around Miss Creative Monster, based around Captain Tamilla, based around Epic Champions, and they will progress you through your content. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, watch the next video, and I will see you on the next video.